getting a little off the beaten path here. Um, with the COVID-19 situation, I collect leaves every summer and freeze them over the winter so that I can do leaf art throughout the winter. And so my freezer is leaves, pizza, and ice cream. That's what I have in my freezer. <laughs> so I had to take some of my leaves out because we wanted to get some extra meat at the store and freeze it just to have a few extra meals. So I had to make room for that to happen. And I went ahead and took a bunch of my leaves and did this eco dye kit. And I'm gonna start doing something a little different. Before, I used to put the good, the bad, and the ugly in my kits. Now, for this summer, I'm just gonna put the prints that I think are really nice, because you always get both with every kit you do. You get good prints and you get not so good prints. So you guys let me know what you think. I really have always put everything in the kits, but this one is massive. This is um, 18 double-sided pages here, so I've got 36 images. I may have to break it into two kits. By the time this video goes up, these will be in my Etsy shop, either one or two kits, and they are linked below in the description box. So let's get into dye a little bit. I used to tie-dye a lot, and I'm over it. I'm done tie-dyeing fabric, at least I think I am. So I have a bunch of this leftover dye, and this is from a company called Grateful Dyes, and their website is grateful-dyes.com. And the colors I used for this kit are brown number 71, Carillion Blue number 52. Their website is really nice too, by the way. Very easy to use. Gray number 61. So these are the colors I have used for this. And um, yeah, this is a company out of Littleton, Colorado. So I just put in a phone order. I go through the website and I write everything I want down and then I call them up and give them the order over the phone because I can go pick it up. So. Um, they came out more faded than I wanted them to, which means I just used too much water and not enough dye. And I always just, um, I don't measure, I don't, I just add to um, sight, okay? I And I thought these were pretty dark, but with these dyes, even if they're pretty dark for paper, add more dye. So. Um, I like how this kit came out though. It looks very watercolory, so let's go ahead and go through it. Now I also spray all of my pages with alum, and I have a full tutorial on how to do this. It's called Twilight Forest, and I will go ahead and link that to an end screen at the end of this video, okay? And that's how you get all of these real cool water stain marks is from the alum. And the alum helps the dye to solidify with the fibers of the paper. So I always use alum without exception. I also always put vinegar in my dye bath when I boil the papers because these need to be boiled. So there's the first one. Really nice, both sides. I'm going to put anything that I would use, and I use a lot. So you're. They're, you're probably going to miss out on, I don't know, three or four of these that aren't great. Like, this is fabulous for collage. Look at that. But there's a few in here that just didn't, like, this is not great, but it's great for grunge. So I'll probably put this in. I really like this, this big, giant leaf. This was off of a vine. Bush, like a, a berry vine leaf and I don't always know what I use so my suggestion is experiment and listen to your gut if your intuition gives you a bad vibe about a leaf don't pick it and there's a rule it says um, if there's three leave it be if there's four ask for more but I deal with leaves that are way more on the branch than just one. Trees, you're pretty safe, okay? Um, you pretty much probably know your area. 
of what's safe and what's not. But with bushes, it's three leave it be, four ask for more. And I always wear gloves when I'm picking leaves because I, you just don't know, okay? I do follow my gut. I, I have very good intuition. That might sound silly, but I do. <laughs> and I use it. So here's this beautiful leaf. I mean, that's what it's there for, right? Our instincts are to guide us. I really like how the colors came out on this sheet. It actually has a lot of the coloring of the Twilight Forest kit. I think I'm going to name this Tranquility. And if, if I get two kits out of this, because this is really massive, I'll do Tranquility 1 and 2. So pretty much so far I've only seen really one that is not great. This is where I struggle. I struggle with what to put in and what not to put in. But if I put it all in, which I'm, now that I'm looking at these, I'm leaning more towards putting them all in, you can just not print the ones you don't like. So it's a real simple fix. I think I'll just continue to do that. You'll see in a little bit, I get some great marks from because I tie grates around the paper really tight and sandwich everything together and I like to use the open ones I get them at Walmart and it's just like a cookie sheet grate that you put on and it's in the video Twilight Forest you'll see everything I use nice kit yeah I'm excited to do the next one the next one I'm not going to do any dye at all and I like to use a lot of RIT dye too guys the R-I-T RIT dye I use a lot of that in my kits as well so now that I'm staying home and not doing any shopping I'm on this really big kick of use what you got I've got the April design team project coming up. I've been filming for that now. See like this to me is not great but there are parts of it that are really good like these leaves here and this stem and this leaf. So psh, forget what I said earlier. I'll just put it all in because this could be torn up for collage and this could be coffee stain. It's they're all workable here. Yeah, but like I said, the next kit, I'm not going to use any dye. I'm just going to use rusty bits, and I'm not going to use any coffee. I'm just going to put, because I have a bunch more leaves that I took out of the freezer that need to be used up. Oh, and by the way, I use Canson Mixed Media Paper for this project. And then, of course, you can always print it on, you know, printer paper or... Um, tissue paper or rice paper whatever you wish to do and there's videos on how to print on tissue and all that too so you can get a thinner print out of these I like to make the originals with Canson because the paper holds up beautifully I've got one tear in this entire kit and this is, I should call it a batch because it's really two kits it's massive gorgeous leaf prints coming out in this and then here is the alum reacts more on some pages than it does on others but alum just makes for some really really fabulous paper I think got a lot of pretty little leaves on this page I really think these are oak I use a lot of scrub oak and when I come across one I'll show you these are those vine leaves that I pulled. I have a this old guy that lives in town. I live in the mountains. And he always lets me come and pluck a few leaves off of the vine off of his fence. So, you know, you can ask people and they're generally, you know, they'll look at you weird and generally say yes. <laughs> I get weird looks all summer long and I don't even care. Okay, so see these grid lines? This is what I was talking about. You can really see them in this one. Now what I've started doing 
to um, kind of minimize that because you only want so many barbecue looking papers in your kit. This is inevitable on the end pages when you tie it all together. But what you can do is lay your grate down and then cover it with leaves, which is what I've been doing. But it's still poked through on some places on this page. But it's better than just having the grate with no leaves because all this whole area here is collageable if you don't want that. Plus, it is a really cool graphic element. But to minimize that effect, just put a bunch of leaves between your first piece of paper and the gray, and that's how you can do that, okay? I didn't used to do it that way, but I started doing it that way because I'm quite, to be honest with you, tired of looking at those stupid gray lines. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put every single page in. Look at this, this is really cool. This has like scraped lines in it. I don't even know how that happened, but that is just so, eco dyeing is magical. It's like um, jelly printing. You, you put your stuff down and you have an idea of what you're gonna get, but it's really a magical art form that you know, you get to participate in and you get to have a tiny bit of say, but the end result isn't up to us. It's up to nature and I love that so much. So here's the last sheet. Really, really nice kit. I'm really happy with this kit. And the scrub oak, you can barely see it. This is what they print quite black. I don't know what is in the leaf itself that makes it print black, but you'll get different colors from different species. And if you live in an area with a lot of species of different leaves, um, then try different stuff. But it was really funny. I was watching a Rosemary Morris video, and I love Rosemary Morris. If you are not familiar with her, check her out. I think her channel is Rosemary Morris. She was laughing about going out and collecting leaves for eco dyeing, and she got a rash on her hands. <laughs> and she got different leaves and didn't quite know what the heck happened. And, you know, um, just follow your instincts and wear gloves. That's my advice for you. Um, definitely. <laughs> I haven't had that issue, knock on wood. But I'm out there collecting and it could just as easily happen to any of us. So just be careful and mindful of what you're doing. If you see little tiny, um, actually rose hips have tiny red berries and they print gorgeous. So um, poison ivy has tiny red berries too and you don't want anything to do with poison ivy. So you could always get like a, some kind of a reference book or look online and target your area of the different species of plants in your area. I generally like to stick with trees because trees are generally pretty safe. You really start getting into trouble when you start getting into bushes and foliage and things like that. So if you really just wanna be super safe, you know, trees are a pretty good bet. So I hope you enjoyed this kit. I think it's a really, for this batch, gosh darn it, Corey. I think it's really beautiful. And now that I've seen how big it is, it's for sure gonna be Tranquility 1 and Tranquility 2. So um, come on back real soon for the April Design Team Project, and I will see you then.